the most uh, common one is the dorsal ventral wave, but also as a lateral wave and as what I call a peristaltic uh, wave. Um, a picture, a picture would make this uh, clearer if we can put that up. Sure. Yeah. Um, so I would say that it's in a way the greatest uh, gain from posture release imagery. I think comes later. It doesn't. It doesn't come when you first. You know, something like my uh, most popular image has been the lamb and egg image. I think, and. Uh, which discusses the appropriate relationship of the dorsal to the ventral surface independent of gravity. Um, but, uh, but it's not until, I, in my opinion, it's not until you've kind of, you've worked with that s to some success, you've worked with the uh, ideas of uh, the functional segments of the body and, and learned how you can imagine freeing up the body in, in, in ways that are, uh, maybe counterintuitive, uh, but are very healthy. Um, well, the the image of the cheetah sitting on the savanna, I'm sure many students have found that helpful. Yeah, I, I don't even know that I used it that much more after then. It just, uh, by then I was starting to think in a lot of ways. But that's true, the cheetah... Uh, seems to be freeing its, uh, you know, neck and allowing its head to go forward and up, <laughs> you know, as though it was taking directions from an Alexander teacher. But I, I know it to be complex, what in fact they're doing. It, it's, a, it's a whole body experience. And uh, I even, uh, I do have imagery that is related to that. I, I wrote an article at one point called Imagery, and neck free, head forward, which is a, a short article that you know that directly relates to the Alexander Technique's uh, main set of directions, uh, which I would almost argue is its main image. <laughs> you know, it's an image that is that is incomplete that people conceive in different ways. Many people don't quite know how to conceive that, but those directions. Uh, because it isn't an image, and I, I turned it into an image, and I, I don't know how people respond to it, but it's, uh, um, so that, uh, that one was successful. Another one was successful early on, which I don't think I have pictures for, was when I had people um, on the table, you know, in constructive rest, yes. was on their back, I would ha imagine them uh, being an alligator. And uh, here's, I'll, I'll sort of play it out for you a little bit. Imagine, you know, I, I'm perhaps uh, up by their, they're, they're laid out on, on, on the mat or on the uh, massage table, and they've got their knees up and something under their head in, in normal uh, constructive rest uh, mode. And then maybe I'm up by their head and neck, and I'd have them imagine they're an alligator. And as an alligator, that means that maybe you know, they're an alligator laying on their back, and they're feeling very comfortable, and they don't, they don't feel, even though they're on their back, which is unusual for an alligator, I, have them, I work with them to feel like, you know, they're too tough for anyone to do any harm, so they can, they can feel secure there. And then as I took their head and neck, I would have them, among other things, imagine that there was a second Alexander teacher who was down at the other end who was gently taking and, and uh, promoting the lengthening and widening of their tail. <laughs> so that, uh, and this, is, this can be a very nice feeling to have <laughs> the thought that you you have two Alexander teachers, you know, it's like double your pleasure. And, uh, and it points to something right there that's pretty, uh, I think, significant, is that the tail, in a sense, is um, a secondary control of the body, you know. Primary control is carried out by what I call a director segment. But 
there is a secondary control, even on ourselves, even though we don't have tails. You know, we have the vestigial tails, and we also have the, you know, patterns within our, you know, our hind end and our, and the outer parts of our legs that, that allow us to move as though we had a tail. So it's, um, that right there is a um, simple thing that an Alexander teacher could do, which could very easily enhance the, for instance, the dropping of the lower back to the mat. It, does that make sense? Or yes, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And what about some imagery for walking to to enhance uh, postural release for somebody who's walking? Well, I could probably name a thing or two, but I I I don't tend to break it up that way. I. Uh, for instance, I, you know, working with all this imagery is going to help your walking, you know, whenever it is you walk. Um, I suppose walking, I, I do have, uh, you know, if you imagine, if you imagine the, the body broken into three segments, this uh, director segment, this motor segment, I call it, and this rudder segment, and maybe we'll see a picture of that on there. If we imagine these three segments as being independent from each other everywhere except out on what I call on the edges of the body, out where the hands and feet, uh, where the hands and feet are, at what I call the dorsal ventral seam. But if you imagine them to be fairly independent of each other, that would be right there a a very good uh, start to walking, for instance, uh, as you're walking, um, you can imagine. Eh, I don't know if I would. It gets more complex than that. I, I, I throw pictures on that that are a little more complex than that. I would show a picture that has um, more splits in it than just the dorsal, than just the director motor and rudder, but it would include a vertical split that, that separates the uh, left and the right side of the body and other splits that separate off uh, the parts of the director segment. All of, that, all of those splits, if you can conceive them, it's a slow process. This isn't quick and easy stuff. But if you can conceive them, you, are, uh, you're, you will be more fluid and that's what you want when you're walking. You you want to have a st- you want to have a sturdy structure and still be fluid. That that is why the particular segments that the particular form of segmentation and splits that I suggest is so important. It preserves a sense of sturdiness in the body, but it also allows it to be supple. There's other ways in which you can imagine yourself your body. Um, segmented, which would be really detrimental to you. Like, for instance, if you imagine your arms and legs are split off from the body or the neck, it's just, yeah, I'll send you a picture of that too to see what you can do with it. But that's definitely a negative way of thinking about the body, but this other method is a, would definitely improve walking. What imagery would you suggest uh, for a newcomer to the technique and to this imagery to to get the basic primary control alert and activated so that the head releases away from the torso instead of getting sunk and back into the torso? Yeah, well, I'm listen, I'm not uh, at all adverse to just a... Uh, to... Uh, Hands-on, I mean, I've, I, the hands-on can help an awful lot in, in terms of people experiencing that neck freeing up. I think I'd recommend that they read my article, uh, Imagery and Neck Free Head Forward, in my article section of my uh, postureleaseimagery.org. It, uh, what it basically, that image is, is one of uh, where I met, where it, it just takes up part of this uh, segmentation.